Have you ever wondered what secrets lie hidden within the swirling clouds of Jupiter? Six years ago, NASA's Juno spacecraft embarked on a daring mission to unlock the mysteries of the largest planet in our solar system. Since then, Juno has been our intrepid guide, capturing breathtaking images and gathering groundbreaking data from Jupiter's tumultuous atmosphere. But Juno's journey didn't stop there. In a bold move, NASA extended the mission to explore the enigmatic moons of Jupiter, Ganymede, Europa, and Io. These icy worlds hold the keys to understanding the very fabric of our solar system. Today, we invite you to join us on a thrilling expedition as we unveil the stunning discoveries made by Juno during its extended mission. From unprecedented views of Jupiter's mesmerizing moons to groundbreaking insights into their hidden depths, prepare to be awestruck by the wonders of the Jovian system. As we delve deeper into the cosmos, we'll uncover the tantalizing secrets revealed by Juno's state-of-the-art cameras and instruments. And as the mission draws to a close in September 2025, now is the perfect time to reflect on the extraordinary journey of discovery that Juno has undertaken. So grab your space helmets and buckle up for an unforgettable adventure through the realms of Jupiter. Join us as we unravel the mysteries of the universe one celestial discovery at a time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on all our cosmic escapades. Let's embark on this cosmic journey together. Let's start with a quick recap. Juno launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida in August 2011. After traveling for five years and 2.8 billion kilometers, the space probe began orbiting Jupiter on July 5th, 2016. After completing most of its primary objectives, NASA extended Juno's mission and set its sights on some of Jupiter's largest moons. In total, the extended mission will add 42 orbits, or Perihov, by 2025, at the end of which NASA will deorbit the probe by burning it up in Jupiter's atmosphere to avoid potentially contaminating those moons. This procedure is in accordance with NASA's planetary protection guidelines, but it's of special importance in Juno's case. Scientists have long wondered whether there could be life on Jupiter's inner moons, and NASA doesn't want to muddy up any future discoveries that could be made there. So, on June 7, 2021, Juno performed its close flyby of Ganymede, using a gravity assist to bring its orbital period from 53 days down to 43 days. Juno had already performed a distant flyby of Ganymede in 2019, when it reached a proximity of 97,000 kilometers, but this one brought the probe within just 1,000 kilometers of the Moon's surface. In this photograph captured by JunoCam, you can see nearly half of Ganymede's total surface in breathtaking detail. For reference, the resolution is about one kilometer per pixel. I love the crisp rendering of Ganymede's unique structural features. You can practically feel its texture with your fingertips. Notice how the icy surface is littered with craters, light and dark patches, and long striations. The darker areas show older terrain, which is heavily cratered, whereas the lighter areas are comparatively younger and less cratered. But what about those long striations? We know, based on previous data, that Ganymede contains at least one vast salty subsurface ocean beneath its icy outer layer, which some speculate could be suitable for life. Scientists think these long structural features might reveal faults produced by tectonic movements generated by heat from the Moon's iron-nickel core. But this is a subject of ongoing research. This image, taken from the same flyby on June 7th, shows Ganymede's Tro's crater in greater detail. The reason it appears so bright is that it's covered in ice. Here is another image from June the 7th of June, which I find remarkable. 
It's a photograph of Ganymede's dark side, and it was taken by Juno's Stellar Reference Unit navigation camera. The Stellar Reference Unit was designed to keep Juno on course using starlight, which makes it ideal for photographing low-light conditions. For scale, the resolution is between 600 and 900 meters per pixel. Again, notice the moon's long striations and craters, some of which are stacked on top of each other. We are really floored by the level of detail Juno was able to capture in such low-light conditions. Interestingly, one of the most surprising discoveries from the mission came not from the orbiter itself, but from Hubble. Yes, that Hubble. Let me explain. You see, to support Juno's exploration of the Jovian moons, NASA asked Hubble to monitor Ganymede's ultraviolet signals. Ganymede has an atmosphere, albeit a very thin one, and one of NASA's goals was to find traces of oxygen they long suspected was hiding there. Nearly everyone expected to find plenty of oxygen based on previous analyses of the moon's ultraviolet emissions. But much to our surprise, Ganymede's atmosphere had very little oxygen in it. What they found instead was a whole lot of water vapor. This discovery has led to a significant revision to our model of Ganymede's atmosphere and could suggest that water vapor might even be present in the atmospheres of icy bodies throughout the solar system. After visiting Ganymede, Juno made its flyby of Europa on September 29, 2022, which gave the probe a gravity assist that shortened its orbit to 38 days. Here is a dramatic image from the flyby, taken from a distance of 351 kilometers. It shows a portion of Europa just north of the equator. What I find extraordinary here is the day-night boundary known as the Terminator. The deep shadows really accentuate the ridges, troughs, and craters that riddle the moon's surface, showing it in almost three-dimensional relief. Scientists think that Europa, like Ganymede, harbors a vast ocean beneath its icy exterior. But new findings suggest there could be a lot more going on than the simple ocean crust model would have you believe. What do I mean by this? Well, hold that thought as we study this image. This photograph was taken by Juno's Stellar Reference Unit camera and shows a zoomed-in portion of Europa's surface. It was taken during the moon's night from a distance of 412 kilometers with a resolution of 256 meters per pixel. This is the highest resolution image that Juno took of Europa. At a glance, your first thought might be, what am I looking at? The thing is, Europa's icy shell is over 10 kilometers thick. Imagine the pressure needed to penetrate so much ice. However, a new paper published by the American Astronomical Society proposes a groundbreaking new theory with a different explanation. We might discuss those theories in the next video, but until then, what are your thoughts about this? Comment down below. Hit that subscribe button for more videos.